What's going on everyone? Welcome back. With the regular season having wrapped up, it's time to look at the playoffs and as always, we have got our weekly NFL game picks outright on the spread along with our locks. So make sure to tune in if you guys enjoy. Hit that like button, subscribe. Also give us a follow on Twitter at all day pigskin to continue interacting with us closer to kickoff, shooting us your questions there. We make sure to answer all of those and better yet, if you guys want access to these game picks earlier on all you have to do is check us out online at alldaypickskin.com sign up for our free newsletter and you'll get access to just that all those details in the description but for now let's get right into it kicking off wild card weekend on saturday we have got the indianapolis colts at the buffalo bills the Colts here are the number seven seed, while the Bills the number two seed in the AFC. And funny enough, this matchup was actually made possible due to the fact that the Bills beat the Dolphins this last week. And that allowed the Colts to sneak in to the playoffs as that final wild card team. Now, these two teams have not played each other all season long. So this is the first time we'll see them square off against each other. And you can probably bet on a relatively high scoring game here because even though you would say, well, the Buffalo Bills probably have the better offense, which we would agree with. There's some matchups here that would tell you that both these teams can stay in the game. For example, the Colts defense has got that bend but don't break mentality. However, they are relatively better stopping the run. However, the Buffalo Bills offensively, they don't really prioritize that. It's mainly been the arm of one MVP candidate, Josh Allen, and some great wide receivers in John Brown, Cole Beasley, and obviously Stephon Diggs that have amassed a lot of their scoring opportunities. So that's what we expect here from the Bills yet again. There's no reason to do anything differently. They're going to probably stick to what's been getting the job done for them all season long. While for the Indianapolis Colts, you can make the case it's the same situation. The Bills defensively much better in the secondary. Their rush defense has got some question marks, but guess what? The Indianapolis Colts, that's what they want to do. They want to run the football. They've got a great offensive line and two great running backs. Jonathan Taylor has been great to round out the season. Naheem Hines, a great pass catching running back. And the Colts and specifically Phillip Rivers have kind of started to gel as the season progressed. And that's what makes them a very dangerous team here. I do think we're going to see a back and forth game just because it does set up nicely for both of these offenses. So if you're looking for a high scoring affair here and maybe you just want to stay away from picking either one of these sides, you could go the over on the point total. As far as the spread itself, the Bills obviously favored at minus six and a half. And if that number does go up right now, even at minus six and a half, I am leaning the way of the Indianapolis Colts because like I said before, this is a good matchup for both of these teams. It appeals to what they want to do offensively. The X factor, which is usually the case for the Colts, will be the play of Phillip Rivers. If he can avoid being turnover prone and making bad decisions, which he's been doing great again to round out the season, then this will be a very close game. And the Indianapolis Colts will make the Buffalo Bills, you know, kind of work for this one. But at the end of the day, when we're looking at both these offenses and what we believe will be a shootout, we have to give the edge to the team that can air out the football better. And that is the Buffalo Bills. They've got more viable threats at that wide receiver position. Josh Allen, is more dangerous when you combine what he can do with his legs as well. He's going to keep that Indianapolis Colts defense honest. So at the end of the day, for that reason, we do like the Buffalo Bills outright. However, on the spread, even though the Bills might pull away a little bit as the game progresses, we still think it'll be right around that touchdown mark. So we do like the Colts on the spread. Next up, we've got the LA Rams at the Seattle Seahawks, a divisional clash here in the playoffs. This is the third time these two teams will be facing off. And in fact, the regular season series was split one to one. Neither one of those games was necessarily a blowout. So there's no reason to expect that this game will be either. And we say it all the time, these NFC West divisional clashes anything can happen. You almost have to throw out the record and that is how we are treating this contest. Of course here, the one variable to monitor will be the health of Jared Goff. He did not play in the regular season finale for the LA Rams. It was John Walford taking his place and obviously without Goff under center, 
then this offense looks very different. And only in that scenario would we say, okay, you hammer the Seattle Seahawks. But right now, if we have to venture a guess, Jared Goff probably does play his status questionable, but that's usually a trend in the right direction as far as injury designations are concerned. But look, if you're looking for any game on Saturday that might have the best chance for an upset, this is the game that we would circle. These two teams know each other so well, and the Rams match up pretty well versus the Seattle Seahawks because defensively, they've got guys that can disrupt Russell Wilson, and it starts with Aaron Donald. And then in the secondary, they've got guys like a Jalen Ramsey that can stop the top overall wide receiver for the Seattle Seahawks and DK Metcalf. And just in general, they've got very good matchups defensively. And that's what this game will come down to. Because offensively, we know that the LA Rams might be limited. So we might not get 100% of what we're used to from them even though they've got a somewhat favorable matchup here versus the Seattle Seahawks secondary. They've got the good wide receivers over there in LA with Cooper Cup, with Robert Woods. They've got tight ends that they can rely on. They've got other backup players that make this a well-rounded offense. But on the flip side, the Seattle Seahawks defense has been slightly improving as the season has progressed. So with all that information, what do you do with this matchup? Well, for my money's worth, I'm still going with the Seattle Seahawks. And this is the main reason why. Because, yes, we anticipate Jared Goff will play, but we also anticipate him to not be at 100%. We think that thumb injury will affect his ability to air out the football. And at some point in time, he will have to beat this Seattle Seahawks team with his arm. We don't think that the Rams will just solely be able to rely on their rushing attack. And due to that reason, we say advantage the Seattle Seahawks. But don't get us wrong. We think this will probably be a relatively lower scoring game compared to some of the other contests we might see. It'll also be a relatively close game. And this is where it gets interesting because on the spread right now, the Seattle Seahawks right around that minus three and a half number. And if that stays the case, and man, if that number goes up even higher, then we would definitely be hammering the LA Rams. Like we said, these divisional clashes, especially the third time these two teams face off, anything can happen. We like this Rams defense. They can stay in these type of games. So due to that prediction and the likelihood that this is a close matchup back and forth type of game, even though we like the Seattle Seahawks outright, we do like the LA Rams on the spread. Moving on to our third Saturday game, we've got the Tampa Bay Bucks at the Washington football team. And despite the fact that the Bucks had the much better regular season record, they are still on the road for this game. But nonetheless, the betting sentiment is in agreement that the Bucks are the team to go with here, and we would agree. Because even though Washington is at home, they are at plus eight in this game. But we kind of expected that this would be the case with whoever came out of the NFC East. But let's give Washington a little bit of credit here, because they're probably the best option that could have come out of the NFC East. They are the best defense here, and that's what you're going to need to potentially stop the Bucks because we've said it before and we'll say it again. This Bucks offense has all the talent in the world on paper, but they still had major scoring inconsistencies. Sure, to close out the season, they were great offensively, but they faced some rather subpar defenses. This Washington defense isn't on par with, let's say, the Detroit Lions defense, and that's what could make this game interesting, at least to begin with, because I'm guessing that this game starts out a little bit slow for Tom Brady to feel out Washington, and we've seen some stingier defenses cause problems for the Bucks' offense. But I will say, much like a team, let's say, for example, the Indianapolis Colts and Phillip Rivers, a new quarterback there, I do think that Tom Brady has assimilated more and more into this offense, gotten better chemistry with all of his weapons, and this offense is trending in the right direction. That's why I would be going with the Bucks here outright, most definitely. And on the spread, like we said, Washington is at plus eight. 
And what could make us hammer the Bucks there as well is probably the biggest storyline here, and that is the status of Alex Smith. Yes, he played in Week 17, but it's clear to see that that calf strain is still bothering him because Taylor Heineke is getting the majority of reps heading into this game, and that could be disastrous for Washington. There are talks of splitting uh, series for these quarterbacks, and that would be... Just the worst thing that could happen here. This Bucks defense is still a good unit. It's great versus the run. So you know whoever is the quarterback for Washington will have to get it done with their arm. And again, the Bucks have some talent in the secondary as well. And if it's Taylor Heineke that has to do it, this is, again, going to potentially turn into a rather decisive victory. We've said that before with some questionable quarterback starters. We said it with Seattle versus, you know, the LA Rams. We'll say it here with Washington versus the Tampa Bay Bucks. The biggest storyline is the play of the starting quarterback and whether he will be available. Right now, we would guess that Alex Smith does play, but we're also going to project that he's still not at 100%, and that's the reason, ultimately, again, why we will go with the Tampa Bay Bucks. They're heading in the right direction. Even if Mike Evans doesn't play in this game, we still like the Bucks that much better offensively. So for that reason, we like the Bucks outright and on the spread. Moving on to Sunday, we start with the Baltimore Ravens at the Tennessee Titans. This, of course, is a rematch of a game from last year's playoffs where the Titans on the road pulled off the upset versus the Ravens. And funny enough, this is a game that we also saw this season in the regular season. Titans also victorious in overtime. But despite all those things and the fact that the Titans are the home team with the you know, higher seed, they are actually home underdogs here at plus three on the spread. And as far as what this means for the game outright, I would actually agree with it because I like the Baltimore Ravens outright as well. And the main reason for this is because this is continuing the trend of the Ravens facing these struggling defenses. We set it for the Ravens all season long. Offensively, Lamar Jackson is inconsistent and exposed as a passer of the football when he faces top tier defenses. This is not the case here with the Tennessee Titans. And that's why I think a lot of those issues offensively for the Ravens will be masked here. You know, those is inconsistencies through the air, some of those question marks they have at wide receiver, well, the Tennessee Titans defense could be a cure-all for that. And I do think those issues will finally catch up to them here. Now, yes, the Titans do have the better supporting cast offensively. Uh, you look at Derrick Henry, you look at A.J. Brown, Corey Davis, John Smith, Ryan Tannehill has been playing very well uh, in addition to that. But the Ravens have got the better defense by far. They're getting healthier at the right time. And for that reason, to me, all the advantages, you check the box for the Baltimore Ravens. I'm not saying that this will be a blowout, but if I'm looking at the team that should have an easier time marching the football down the field, to me, that is without a doubt the Baltimore Ravens. I love what the X factor here for Lamar Jackson should be able to do. Um, I do think it'll probably be close to begin with, but at the end of the day, I think the Ravens can pull away and get revenge on their loss from last year. I like them outright, and that plus three number on the spread, I think it should be higher, and for that reason, I would go with the Ravens on the spread as well. If you guys want to play it safe, what I would suggest is, you know, teasing that number down, making this game practically a pick em, and then going with the Ravens on the spread that way as well. Next up, we've got the Chicago Bears at the New Orleans Saints, and the Bears find themselves in this spot despite the fact that they lost last week, but they can say thank you to the LA Rams for beating the Arizona Cardinals, but honestly, I think the reason for celebrating kind of stops there, because now the Bears have to face the New Orleans Saints, and it's probably a one-and-done situation here, because we said it as far as the Bears are concerned all season long. When they actually have to face viable competition, that's when things fall apart because that's when Mitch Trubisky has to be the reason why the Bears win a football game. We saw it last week versus an elite offense in the Green Bay Packers. Mitch Trubisky in shootouts just can't keep up. We've seen it versus other opponents that have good defenses. Mitch Trubisky just can't, you know, outperform the defense. And honestly, the New Orleans Saints kind of check both those categories. They've got a very good defense and an offense that's also very formidable. And even though Drew Brees, you know, not as great as, let's say, Aaron Rodgers this year, who the Bears faced last week, he's still someone that knows the playoffs very well. 
He's got great control of this offense. And despite him potentially missing Michael Thomas, one of his top weapons here, that's been the case for them all season long. We expect the Saints to get Alvin Kamara back from his COVID designation. And just like the Bears are going to be aided by their defense, expect the Saints to be aided by theirs. And I think that's going to be the X factor in this game. I think the Saints defense will dictate the way this game goes. If they play up to their potential and, you know, cause havoc for Mitch Trubisky, get after him, which is definitely possible. They have a great pass rush and a lot of talent in the secondary as well. That's what could flip this game into being a blowout. And on the flip side, if the Saints defense kind of struggles, then don't be shocked for this game to be closer than some people expect. Because on the other side, you've got the Bears defense who has pretty much been doing that exact same thing all season long, keeping the Bears offense in this game and in games all year long. But again, we've said it before. You get to a point in the season where your shortcomings on either side of the football kind of catch up to you, and we have to believe that's what happens here with the Chicago Bears. The Saints pretty much a lock outright. As far as the spread is concerned, this is, you know, one of the bigger spreads on the week with good reason. The Saints getting plus 10, and honestly, we're going to go with the Saints here and we just feel like the Bears barely got into the playoffs. They were pretty lucky to do so. And in matchups where they have been in situations versus elite offenses versus good defenses, that's when it gets bad for them. We like the Saints to win this game and be able to cover that 10-point margin as well. Our final game features the Cleveland Browns at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yet another playoff divisional clash and these two teams facing each other now twice in two weeks split the series in the regular season but obviously a big reason why was last week Ben Roethlisberger did not play so what happens now well we'll go back to our breakdown last week I think that's a good place to start because that game kind of went how we expected we said that with Big Ben out the Browns were the better team that they should get the victory but that also you should not sleep on this Pittsburgh Steelers defense because despite some of its injuries, it's still very talented and Baker Mayfield would still have his hands full. And wouldn't you know, that was kind of exactly what the situation ended up being. The Browns, it wasn't until late in that game that they kind of separated themselves and earned that victory. And that was versus a Mason Rudolph-led offense. Now you insert Big Ben and you try and make that same argument, and you just really can't. Offensively, the Pittsburgh Steelers, in my opinion, have the advantage. Defensively, I think you've seen it in both these games that they played in the regular season. They have the advantage, and for that reason, I am picking the Pittsburgh Steelers to win this game. Now, it probably depends on which offense of the Pittsburgh Steelers we see, the one that you know kicked off the season almost unstoppable, or the one kind of mid point of the season where it kind of sputtered off in a couple game losing streak where it just couldn't get it right but I have to believe that it's the playoffs here and the Pittsburgh Steelers the more experienced team definitely there uh, they've also got a lot of talent offensively and with the fact that right now unfortunately timing wise the Browns dealing with some COVID outbreaks you know players coaches that's something that's going to be detrimental to them as well maybe not as big of a factor but still it'll be something that's in the background that has an impact i like the pittsburgh steelers to get a hard fought victory here it probably won't be pretty these two teams know each other very well uh but at the end of the day give me the pittsburgh steelers to win this game outright however i will give some credit to cleveland i think the spread right now is a little bit too high the steelers at minus six the Browns are going to put their best foot forward here. I think they're going to stay in this game. I think it's going to be a close game, maybe, you know, lower scoring. And for that reason, I do actually like the Cleveland Browns on the spread. So with that, we wrap up our pickums. Now looking at our locks of the week, we've only got two games for you this week. But let's start with the slam dunk one. And that is the Tampa Bay Bucks versus the Washington football team. And if... Alex Smith does not play in this game or if there's any type of rotation between the two quarterbacks in Washington 
we think the Bucks absolutely run away with this game. Yes, they have had their fair share of offensive issues, but right now, Alex Smith and the Washington football team just not healthiest at the most important position. Give us the Bucks to win. And then finally, the Bears versus the Saints. You know, if last game was a slam dunk, well, what's better than that? Because the Bears here, I do think they were lucky to get into the playoffs. And this is one of the better teams in the NFL. The Saints, both offensively and defensively. I like the Saints to win this game. I honestly don't see Mitch Trubisky having all that much success. And when all falls on his shoulders, that's usually when he crumbles. Give us the New Orleans Saints outright. So with that, we wrap up this wild card weekend breakdown. And as always, let us hear it in the comment section. Do you agree, disagree, along with any other questions you guys might have? We will do our best to answer them. And if you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe. Also, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us as the week progresses. Shoot us your questions there as well. We will make sure to answer them. And if you guys want early access to these picks, just check us out online at alldaypigskin.com. Sign up for our free newsletter. That is as simple as it gets. All the details in the description. But for now, we'll see you guys in future videos.